Hi everyone, my name is Xinjing Li, and I'm presenting today on behalf of my colleagues, Karen Shen, Nancy Yang, and the Social Entrepreneurship to Spur House team. Um, the topic I'm presenting today is crowdsourcing to decrease hepatitis stigma. And I will first give you an overview of hepatitis stigma uh, in China, and then I will introduce crowdsourcing as a useful tool uh, in health and health research. And I will finally present you um, a publication we have in uh, Journal of Viral Hepatitis on um, the topic of crowdsourcing to decrease hepatitis B stigma in a man who have sex with men community in China. So first I want to give you a background of um, hepatitis stigma in China. So currently, um, more than 90 million persons are chronically infected with HBV in China. And individuals with HBV suffer not only from um, the infection itself, um, but also social isolation and denial of employment and educational opportunities. Um, HBV stigma has also caused delays in seeking health services, especially HBV um, testing and HBV vaccination. So um, we recognize that HBV is a complex social process and it can be operationalized as a social process um, involving discrimination at work or at school, um, devaluation in interpersonal relationships, fear of physical contact or shame and blame towards persons with HBV. So um, in the current HBV stigma literature, there are several important gaps. First, uh, measures of HBV stigma are inconsistent. And second, um, studies um, frequently conflate evaluations of stigma with that of um, HPV knowledge, although um, evidence has shown that knowledge does not necessarily lead to decrease in um, stigma. And finally, um, to, to date, there are few reports on um, interventions to effectively reduce um, stigma. So um, to fill these gaps, more research is needed to develop further understanding of HAP-B stigma and also to evaluate interventions to effect effectively reduce HAP-B stigma. So um, we think that crowdsourcing may be an effective tool to decrease HAP-B stigma. Um, crowdsourcing is uh, the process of having a large group solve a problem together and then share solutions with the public. Um, challenge contests are a, one of the examples of crowdsourcing. Um, so how it is done is that an open call on a selected um, topic is sent out to the public or a specific community that we are creating the solution for. And then um, individuals from the community are invited to submit their creative solutions to this problem and winners would receive recognition and a prize. Um, so the finalist solutions would be shared with the public um, and they can also be implemented uh, when it's re relevant. So as you can see, crowdsourcing is not only a way to solicit um, innovative solutions to public health problem, it is also a way to increase community engagement and health equity. So there has been growing evidence on using crowdsourcing to improve health outcomes. Um, studies have shown that crowdsourced materials um, increase HIV testing uptake and condom use. Um, we also found that crowdsourcing was effective in promoting HPV testing uptake in an MSM community. Um, in 2018, SASH, together with WHO, CDR, and Social Innovation and Health Initiative um, published a crowdsourcing um, practical guide. Uh, and then there are more details and examples of using crowdsourcing and health research. Um, so to the current study, um, we did um, 
a secondary analysis um, from a nationwide RCT that was designed as a cross-source intervention to promote Hep B and C testing among a men have sex um, with men population in China. So um, the participants was 470 Chinese um, MSM. They were not tested for HVV or HCV before, and they had no history of HVV vaccination. Um, so the participants were randomized into an intervention and control group. Um, for the intervention group, we had a cross-source intervention. Um, so the intervention was composed of uh, four uh, multimedia um, entries. There were two images and two videos that were, um, uh, we, that were uh, designed to promote HAPI and C testing. Um, and uh, how we had the how we got the entries it was for a nationwide public challenge contest um, and the contest yielded eight finalists we had 60 msm community members um, help us rate the eight finalist entries and then we um, selected four top scoring entries that the community members thought are uh, most suited to be used um, um, for this purpose and the recruitment and the consent um, and the implementation were done through WeChat, which is the largest social media and messaging platform in China. Um, so at baseline, uh, a uh, we included a 20 item um, HPV stigma scale um, at enrollment. And then at follow up, which is four weeks post intervention, we also delivered um, the 20 item uh, HPV scale. Um, one thing to mention is that we ended up analyzing the data, not based on randomization, but based on um, exposure to the intervention materials. Um, that was because uh, the recruitment was done um, within MSM communities, and then there were uh, significant sharing of the intervention materials among the intervention and the control groups. Um, so we ended up analyzing the data um, based on um, uh, exposure to the materials. Uh, they were, uh, the first group was the full, full exposure group, uh, which means that the participants reported viewing all four intervention materials that were delivered to them. And for the partial exposure group, um, participants reported viewing one, two, three intervention materials. And the no exposure group, um, participants reported viewing no uh, intervention materials. Um, so what we found was that full exposure to the crowdsource intervention was associated with a statistically significant decrease in stigma compared to the no exposure group. Um, as you can see in the graph, um, for the partial group, the, uh, there was also a reduction in um, stigma score, but it was not um, significant. We also found that full exposure to the intervention was associated with consistently greater reduction in stigma across all four stigma domains, which was um, discrimination at work and school, um, inter, um, devaluation interpersonal relationship, uh, fear of physical contact, and finally shame and um, blame towards um, uh, HPV carriers. Um, we also found that um, found greatest stigma in the physical contact domain and least stigma in the shame and blame domain. And here are just some examples um, the, um, we found at baseline. So for the physical contact domain, 50 Two percent of participants believe that persons with HPV should not work with children, and 47% felt that uh, they should not work in the restaurant. And then you can see only a few um, participants thought that persons with HPV did something wrong to deserve their illness, or they should be ashamed. So based on these results, um, we thought that the cross-source intervention was associated with a modest but statistically significant reduction in HBV sigma. So um, this is in line with previous studies showing that community-based interventions have a significant impact on stigma um, towards mental health and HIV. So um, cross-sourcing interventions might be um, successful in reducing stigma 
because they're created by the community for um, which it is intended for. And um, this crowdsourcing intervention also has a potential to be used um, in other populations to reduce uh, happy stigma. We recognize, however, there are several um, limitations with the current study. First, it was a secondary analysis of an RCT um, for hepatitis testing, and stigma was only a secondary outcome. Uh, it was not possible to capture the whole, um, the entire complexity of the stigma process here. Although the, um, the measures we used uh, for happy stigma was validated um, in the Chinese speaking population. And second, um, we conducted our analysis based on um, uh, intervention exposure rather than randomization. And the reason for doing that um, was mentioned earlier that um, we, we found um, significant sharing of materials among the intervention and control group. Um, and third, um, the recruitment was done in the community, uh, MSM community setting. So um, we might have missed men who were disconnected from the MSM community. Um, although we found that the sample we had was um, representative of the majority of the um, MSM online community. Um, and finally, this was a brief four week intervention um, with only one follow up point. So we cannot determine the uh, sustain sustainability of the effect. So future research would reach a more holistic understanding of the intervention effect if a longer study period and more follow up points are in place. Um, and I would like to thank my colleagues, Harry Shen, Nancy Yang, and the whole team from the UNC Project China and Social Entrepreneurship to Spur House um, team um, that work on this project. Um, we would also like to thank Dr. William Wong for um, commenting and supporting the study in the revision process. So if you have any questions or comments regarding the study or on this topic, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you so much.